I cut the check, I cut the check, I cut the check Tell my niggas we up next, so we up next She shot a text, she shot a text, she shot a text Kill the p- I might put the bitch to rest Put a nigga on that same shit I've been ballin' with my niggas, Kevin King Bridge Oh, you drippy, but you better tuck your chain quick Hey, what's good, y'all? I got something to say first before I edit this playing video, or well, while I'm editing this playing video, I realized that I had the Eastern Conference games mixed up. Well, the page that I was looking at had the Eastern Conference games mixed up. So, who's really playing first is the Hornets versus the Pacers. They're the ninth and the tenth seed. And who's playing on the sub with the the second game is the Celtics versus the Wizards, who are the eighth and the seventh seed. So, Hornets versus the Pacers, I'm going to take, like I said, I'm going to take the Pacers, just off of experience, so the Hornets might go home for game one, and then I'm going to take the ugh, Celtics versus Wizards game. That's hard. Mm, that's hard. I'm going to go, I'm going to go Celtics, though. I'm going to go Celtics. I'm going to go Celtics, and I'm going to have the, the Wizards being the Pacers. Probably so. Yeah, probably. I don't think they're gonna lose two games in a row. See, it was different. Them losing one game, but I don't think the Wizards are gonna lose two games in a row. Damn, it's kind of fucked them a whole play playoff series. No, it don't. Like whoever, they both gonna lose series one anyway. So I ain't gonna lie, they both gonna lose series one. So like when you watch my video, just understand that I didn't. I had the ranking mixed up a little bit, and when you watch the playoff video, just know I had the rankings messed up a little bit. Whatever I was looking at was wrong. So. Other than that, that should be it. Um, yeah, I had the west side right, of course, because that's been in the news. That's why. Well, the east side, when you hear it, you're like, wait, that's all. I understand. I had it mixed up. So, my fault. But other than that, what's good, y'all? We back with another video. Another episode of Between the Lines, man. This is a really exciting episode. I got a lot of things to talk about. I'm going to break them up into two videos. I want to talk about the playing games. Then I want to talk about the playoffs and who I think is going to win it all. And then probably later on this week or early next week, I'm going to come out with my second mock draft since the season is over with. So, got a lot of stuff to talk about. But this video is specifically about the playing games. Now, how I feel about the playing games, well, if you don't know about it, if you don't know, you've been living under a rock for like the last year. A playing game is something that they introduced to us last year in the bubble where the 7th and the 8th seed will play each other. Then the 10th and the, I mean the ninth and the 10th seed will play each other. So the winner of the 7th and the 8th seed would be the for sure 7th seed, untouchable. And then the loser of that game will face the winner of the 9th versus 10th. Now whoever loses in the 9th versus 10th game, they're out. And whoever wins, they get to face it. Whoever whoever lost in the first game, so it's pretty self-explanatory. Then whoever wins that game, that's the AFC. So I'm not really, I'm not really like I see a lot of people don't like that don't like the um playing games. I don't really mind it. Um, one thing that's kind of weird is how the seven seed they got to be in a playing game, but then again, like they can easily be separated by like two games. So I understand it, but I did see some people saying like. Let's just have it be the ninth and the tenth seed versus each other. Then whoever wins that game faces the eighth seed for the eighth spot, which is understandable. But if the seventh and, and the eighth seed are separated by like one or two games, which they usually are sometimes, just just put them all in and just have a, a little tournament. And at the end of the day, just have a little tournament. So I understand it. Makes sense. But this year it's starting off with a bang I'm not gonna lie last year was a little taste of it to see if they were gonna bring it back this year and it ended up being really good but this is the first like real one and we have a lot of great matchups Grizzlies versus Spurs Lakers versus Warriors Pacers versus Wizards um, Celtics versus Hornets those games come on the day so that's be really exciting the, re- the game that everybody wants to watch comes on tomorrow but I'll talk about that last so the first game I'm gonna get into is Pacers versus Wizards now, this is hard. This is really hard. These, I ain't gonna lie. The when, if the Pacers are not like going, they are really boring. But like, if Karis LeVert and Demontis Sabonis are going, they are kind of fun to watch. But 
at the time when they're not doing nothing, it can it can be boring to watch. But the Wizards, they have been on a hot streak. Their defense has been good. I, I think I seen it. They said they won 16. I mean, out of their last 24 games, they won 16 out of their last 24 games. So that's really good. The Wizards has, have been on a roll. But you've seen, even though they beat a young Charlotte team the other day without, with Bradley Beal, he was still hurt, and he even said it yesterday. Him playing in that last game when they really didn't need, he didn't really need to play. They were already a solidified AFC. It was kind of hard headed on him, and now he's still going to be hurt going into the, this playing game. And they just want to make the playoffs. So if they come out bad, if they come out bad this game, I can definitely see the the Pacers running this. The Pacers are they've been not hot lately, but they've been playing really good basketball. Osei Brissett has had a couple thirty and ten games. Karis Levert has been really good as as a point guard of this team. Demontis Zabonis has been averaging a triple double in the last month, and you already know with TJ McCollum, TJ McCollum, not McCollum, McConnell. He leads the league in steals. So this is a really good team. I don't know who I would pick this game. Like I said, Will look. I mean, <laughs> said Will. Bill looked really bad the other day, so I don't know. Like I said, they did win that game, but it was against a really young, a really young Hornets team who didn't really know how to close that game. I don't see the Pacers like if this was a close game, I don't see them having the same problem. This team did just play like last week. Me and my dad was watching it. Um, really good game. Came down to the wire. Russell Westbrook with a game saving block. So hey, I don't know. I want to go with the Pacers because, bro, Karis, Karis LeVert is my dog. Karis LeVert one of my favorite players. But take the bias out of it, I don't know. But I can't say Russell Westbrook has been hot in this last month. But like I just said earlier, Sabonis has been too. He's been having a triple double. This is not going to talk about it because of Sabonis. But like he, he, he's he been he's been on this shit and Karis been on this shit. So. I'm going to go with the Pacers. Here's why, cause they're they supporting cast. They normally show up. Like you'll have games where, like like I said, if Beal's not on nothing, it's gonna be just Westbrook. So if he's not on nothing, that really that depends. Cause if, if Beal wasn't hurt, I would definitely pick them. But since he's a little bit hurt, that's kind of weird. And then it's like last game, it was just Westbrook doing everything. Like sometimes where he has some more, he'll have his nights where he just doesn't do anything. Um, Davis Bertans just have his nights where the shot just doesn't fall. So, you never know with this team, so I'm going to go with the Pacers. Um, next game, probably the most exciting, the second most exciting out of all the playing games. My neck hurts. Um, grit, not Grizzlies. Celtics versus Hornets. This can be a really good matchup, but if both teams are healthy, I'm going to give it to the Celtics. And this is the 8th and 7th. Oh, it was 8th and 7th. So, yeah, both teams are healthy. I'm going to give it to the Celtics. I'm going to say they're going to solidify. They're going to. They're going to cash in on that 7 seed because, like I said, when it comes down, you don't really know what this um, Hornets team. They are really young. If they had Gordon Hayward, I'd probably pick them. But they are really young. Like you've seen there, how young they were last game. They didn't really know how to close. They were just chucking up shots for four minutes left. So, I'm going to go with the Celtics. Also, they got Brad Stevens, who, even though the team has been underperforming this year, he's still one of the best coaches in this league. They got one of the best young stars in this league. Kemba's starting to play really well now, and they're more deep. Uh, I guess <laughs> I just go with the I go with the Celtics, man. Just just off of like maturity and stuff, they will win. But I wouldn't be surprised if one of the Charlotte guards have a really really good game. I'm like talking like I I feel like Terry Rozier can come out of nowhere and just pop out, drop forty or something in this game. He seems like that type of player. So whoever loses that game, so. The Cel like I said, the Celtics would be the, the seventh seed going into the playoffs. And it would be, in my thoughts, the Pacers versus the Hornets. Do I want to go Pacers again? I don't know. I feel like the Hornets might get that one. But then again, some bonus has been. That's, see, that's an even matchup, though. That's an even matchup. Pacers versus Hornets. That's an even matchup. But I still might have to go patient. This is off of experience. Like, they're a more experienced team, and it helps out a lot. Like I said, if this Hornets team was fully healthy, I would give it to them. But I feel like the Pacers and the Celtics are going to come out of this plane. Celtics, number, Celtics at number seven. Pacers at number eight. So, yeah, that's how I feel on the east side. Now on the west, these are really two good games. Um, I'm just seeing the other day, Steph Curry went crazy on the Grizzlies. And... The Grizzlies came out 
it was just Jonas, Jonas Valentunas that was really hooping like that. Ja had a really bad game. And if we're looking at this matchup right now, it's not getting better for Ja. Now he has to stick with... Now he has to be guarded by DeJounte Murray and Kelvin Johnson all game. So, it's another chance he might have a really bad game because DeJounte Murray beat Lockett. Yeah, I, I, if you don't know, I'm going with the Spurs. I think the Grizzlies are going to stay at home game one. Not just because of DeJounte, of course, but DeMar DeRozan has been hooping. Yaka Pirtle is one of the most underrated centers in this league. Um, Kelvin Johnson has been bullying people like no other. And they're just a fun team. No lie, the Spurs are fun to watch. Not even Walker when he gets off is fun to watch. Um, I would say, I would say, is Derek White back? I don't know. I ain't gonna lie. I've been working a lot the last few weeks. I, I ain't watched no Spurs. <laughs> I ain't watched no basketball in the last few weeks. But Spurs, when I do get to watch them, they are really fun to watch. They got a really nice team. Um, Rudy Gay coming off the bench. Patty Mills, he can get off at any time. But like I said, it's gonna be hard for um, Ja to really get his feet wet in this in this game because you are getting guarded by a first team all defense type player. So that sucks. <laughs> that sucks. And then I'm just gonna pick Pop over Taylor Jenkins. Coach Popovich is just more seasoned. So I got them winning this game. They're gonna go on to face the winner of the Lakers and the Warriors. Now this is the reason why I wanted to bring this video. Y'all know I am a Lakers fan. Sorry, I'm a Lakers fan, but I'm a basketball fan, my guy. <laughs> I'm a Lakers fan because of Kobe. I'm a basketball fan first, though. Kobe's not on this team no more. Rest in peace to go. He's not on this team, so they still, they still my team. But like, if if I'm just saying, the Warriors was, was to beat us, I wouldn't care. And for us, I wouldn't even care. Because we're definitely going to beat the Spurs. And we're just going to face the Jazz. That's an easy five-game series. But like I said, I, I, the Jazz not nothing to me. I'm not going to lie. They not nothing to me. But like I said, bro, if the Lakers lose this, I wouldn't be mad. One, because, like, yo, the headlines of Steph Curry beat LeBron, that would be. That will help Steph Curry's legacy a lot. A lot. And you know the other part, he's going to be like, oh, LeBron was hurt. No, he came back, played two games for you to play, and he's not hurt. Steph Curry has been hoping lately. He's been making that MVP race hard. Oh, that's supposed to be my last video, not the mock draft. I knew that. It's the war show. So the war show is definitely coming out probably Thursday. That's the next day I'm off. Because I want to talk about something a lot on that war show. But, uh, yeah. The Warriors, has, they've been getting into a groove lately. They've been winning a lot. Andrew Wiggins has been hooping. I love I love the way he changed his game. I, I feel like um, the Warriors just fit him so perfectly. I was talking to my dad about this. The, thing, why, the reason why Andrew Wiggins failed, I don't, I wouldn't say failed, but the reason why a lot of people would have labeled him as a bust when he was on the Timberwolves was I feel like the narrative that was given to him coming out of college, coming out of high school, was just so unfair to him. They were calling him Maple Jordan because he was from Toronto. They were calling him Kobe and stuff. Like, and when he doesn't live up to that, that's not his fault that y'all was calling him that because he's never been that. Like, yes, the high school highlights was probably one of the best highlights of all time. And he was really good in college, but, like, the call him Maple Jordan and all that stuff. And then when he comes in the league and he doesn't really own, live up to that, that's, that's hard. Maple Jordan is the best player of all time. Kobe is one of the best players of all time. He's not gonna automatically live up to that. That's that's really hard. So you can't like you can't really give people these narratives, and then when they don't live up to it, you call them a bust. Like they will call Lebr uh, Zion Lebron coming out of high school, coming out of high school and college. If he doesn't ever live up to Lebron, he never gets championships. They'll probably call him a but a bust. But that's stupid because that's that's the narrative y'all gave him. He he was never that type of player, anyways. I don't know why they compare him to Lebron, but like. That's a hard narrative to live up to. Like, call, being called Baby LeBron, being called Baby Maple Jordan, that shit's hard to live up to. But the reason why I love Andrew Wiggins on this team, because they don't ask him to do so much. They were asking him to be the number one option in um, the Timberwolves. And he lived up to it that one year when he averaged 23. He was a dog that year. But, like, he's just never been that type of player. He's always been that player that you put beside somebody. Like, they tried to do that with Cat, But him and Cat are, like, the same person just... I won't say emotionless players, but like players that like Jim, what Jimmy Butler said from the outside, it looks true. Like players that don't really want it like that. <laughs> so 
you pair you pair Andrew Wiggins up with Draymond Green, a person that's gonna keep pushing him and pushing him to really go get it. Now look what Andrew Wiggins is doing. To me, he's having the best year of his career, and he's not even he's not even averaging the best numbers of his career. He's now a solidified three and D wing. They put him on the best player on, on the other team every game. I see him guard LeBron, Luca. Like he was a solidified three and D wing. He's able to shoot the ball, and he's been more consistent consistent this year. So. Props to Andrew Wiggins. He's not going to get no most improved player nods, but I think he definitely deserves some. And then not just off of numbers, just the way he's playing, man. He's, he's, they, a lot of people are going to get this all to Curry, but Andrew Wiggins and Draymond Green, they're both really good co stars. And I feel like they, the Warriors, man, the Warriors are not nothing to play with. Like, I, I see a lot of people saying, oh, there's no way they beat the Lakers. Let Steph score the first 15 points. We're not winning that fucking game. If he if he starts off hot, we're not it, it, not even just him. If the team starts off hot, we're not winning that game. Um, yes, our stars look good. That's the thing. Our stars gonna have to play the whole game. Our bench is trash. It's trash. I'm not gonna lie. Like Taylor Horn Tucker, he goes crazy without LeBron. He's gonna be another one of those young stars that when they get detached from LeBron, they're gonna start doing their thing. And there's nothing wrong with LeBron. It's just saying like. The players that he gets paired up with are players that need the ball. And when you play with LeBron, like your AD, Dennis Schroeder, even Dennis Schroeder, like, it's for poor saying he doesn't even like his role. If you if you get paired up with LeBron, you're a spot-up shooter. And not a lot of people like that. Like me, I still feel like Kuzma has a lot in him. But, and you see it when LeBron and AD don't play. Kuzma just takes over for us. But when you play with LeBron, what is Kuzma? A spot-up shooter. But to get on to what I was going to say is, uh, who do I think is going to win this game? I think the Warriors are hitting that stride at the right time. I think the Warriors might get this one. With all the hype, I think the Warriors might get this one. Draymond, my, my big boy better start getting his respect. Definitely first team on defense or second team, whatever y'all want to do. Um, the Warriors are one of the best defensive teams in the league, and it's because of him and Wiggins. Nobody else. <laughs> Nobody else. Oh, even Kelly. When Kelly Oubre plays, yeah, he's a big part of it, too. But it's because of him and Wiggins. Him and Wiggins be strapped and everything. Like, they just said, they, yeah, yeah, Valentino's had 20 and 14, but, like, when Draymond was on that boy, it wasn't, it wasn't all that. But, I don't lie, I might have to give it to the Warriors, bro. I might have to give it to the Warriors. And for me, I don't care. I, I wouldn't be mad if we lose. Because we're definitely beating the Spurs. We lost in the Spurs. That's my prediction for the next game. We we lost in the Spurs. And we're going to be that AFC. And we're going to take care of the Jazz in five games. Probably four. Right. Am I being too disrespectful? Let me know in the comments. Am I being too different, disrespectful on the Jazz? Like I just don't know. They're not. Nothing to be scared of. In my opinion, they're nothing to be scared of. Not at all. <laughs> they're not. So, that's it with this video. If you want to know what I said again, load up. Uh, I got the Pacers beating the Wizards. I got the Celtics beating the Hornets. The Wizards go home first game. Then the Hornets face the Pacers. I got the Pacers winning. So, the Celtics are the 7th seed. The Pacers are the 8th seed. And I got the Grizzlies losing to the Spurs. I got the Warriors beating the Lakers. So, Lakers versus Spurs. I got the Lakers winning that. Warriors 7C, Lakers 8C. So, I feel pretty comfortable about that. I'm not going to lie. I feel pretty comfortable. So, that's it for this video. I have two more to record. I, I told my friends, I'm, I'm eating on YouTube today. I'm going to get my views. They're going to start subscribing my shit. Oh, God. I'll talk to y'all later. <laughs>